بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا All perfect praise is due to Allah the Almighty I testify that none is worthy of worship except Allah and I testify that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his final prophet and messenger may Allah exalt his mention as well as that of his families and all his companions. Going back to the narration, we're still at verse 12, talking about the heavens that Allah Azza wa Jal created. And continuing with the narration of Abu Dharr al-Ghifari, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave similitude to the heavens and to, the, to a ring thrown in an open desert when they, when they are compared to the footstool. And then the same for the footstool when compared to the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal. I want to give some astronomical uh, information here, not because this is an astronomy, astronomy class, but I was really taken and touched when I was preparing for this session. The more we learn, the more we understand why Allah Azza wa Jal addressed the disbelievers and told them to look around them and contemplate and ponder upon the cosmic signs around them. Allah Azza wa Jal addressed the minds of the disbelievers and told them to use it. Perhaps it will lead them once they ponder upon these signs. Perhaps they will lead them to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to the following verses, verses 2 to 5 from chapter al -Rad. Allah says, Allah الذي رفع السماوات بغير عمد ترونها ثم استوى على العرش وسخر الشمس والقمر كل يجري لأجل مسمى يدبر الأمر يفصل الآيات لعلكم بلقاء ربكم توقنون وهو الذي مد الأرض وجعل فيها رواسي وأنهارا ومن كل الثمرات جعل فيها زوجين اثنين يُغْشِي اللَّيْلَ النَّهَارِ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ وَفِي الْأَرْضِ قِطَعٌ مُتَجَاوِرَاتٌ وَجَنَّاتٌ وَجَنَّاتٌ مِنْ أَعْنَابٍ وَزَرْعٌ وَنَخِيلٌ صِنْوَانٌ وَغَيْرُ صِنْوَانٌ يُسْقَى بِمَاءٍ وَاحِدٍ وَنُفَضِّلُ بَعْضَهَا عَلَى بَعْضٍ فِي الْأُكُلِ إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يعقلون وإن تعجب فعجب قولهم أإذا كنا ترابا أإنا لفي خلق جديد أولئك الذين كفروا بربهم 
وأولئك الأغلال في أعناقهم وأولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون. Which means and listen to the words Allah uses at the end of every verse to conclude every verse with. It is Allah who erected the heavens without pillars that you can see. Then He is ascending or established over above or is established above the throne and made subject the sun and the moon, each running in its course for a specified for a specified term. He arranges each matter. He detailed the signs that you may be certain of the meeting with your Lord. Look at the conclusion. He detailed the signs that you may be certain of the meeting with your Lord. That's one conclusion. The next verse. And it is He who spread the earth and placed therein firmly set mountains and rivers, and from all of the fruits He made therein two mates. He causes the night to cover the day. Indeed, in that are signs for a people who give thought. The following verse. And within the land are neighboring plots and gardens of grapevines and crops and palm trees, growing several from a root or otherwise, watered with one water. But we make some of them exceed others in quality of fruit. Indeed, in that are signs for a people who reason. Yet, disbelievers still insisted to be rebellion, to deny and reject. Listen to the following verse. And if you are astonished, O Muhammad, after they have seen all of this and heard this, if you are astonished, O Muhammad, then astonishing is their saying, when we are dust, will we indeed be brought into new creation? They still rejected and denied and refused to accept resurrection. After Allah Azza wa Jal showed them magnificent signs of His ability to create. Those are the ones who have disbelieved in their Lord. And those will have shackles upon their necks. And those are the companions of the fire. They will abide therein eternally. I was searching, as I said, and preparing for the session. And I decided to go a little scientific. And I came across things I couldn't help myself when I was reading these pieces of information from crying. Brothers and sisters, the glory and might and greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal is indescribable. And you can see that when you reflect and ponder upon his creations. When I saw what I saw in numbers about the heavens, about the space, about the universe, I couldn't help myself from crying. And please allow me to read some of the things I came across, which I was not aware of before. Some of you might have come across before uh, this before 
they, uh, when they talk about the universe and the numbers that they give, and it is all within it is all within observable universe, which is what they could reach, what their knowledge enabled them to know of. Meaning there are many more pieces of information, statistics, that are unknown to mankind now. When they talk about the universe, they commonly define it as the totality of everything that exists, including matter, energy, planets, stars, galaxies, everything. They say there are Probably more than one billion galaxies in the observable universe. These galaxies vary in size, some of which contain as many as a trillion stars. In 2010, two years ago that is, a study was done by some astronomers and they have estimated, they estimated the observable universe to contain 300 sextillion stars. This is a number I've never heard and I've never come across before, but it means 3 times 10 to the power 23, 23 zeros. And this is our universe, meaning this is the first heaven. Again, this is what they came across. The diameter of a typical galaxy is 30,000 light years. It's a unit of measure, which is roughly 10 trillion kilometers. This is the average diameter of a galaxy. The, the typical distance between two neighboring galaxies is three million light years. Allah the Almighty says, Sanurihim ayatina fil afaq wa fi anfusihim, hatta yatabayyana lahum annahu al haqq. Awalam yakfi bi rabbika annahu ala kul shayin shaheed. We will show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves, until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth, but is it not sufficient concerning your Lord that He is over all things a witness? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We testify to the great. We ask Allah, Allah forgive us for our shortcomings. We testify to the greatness of Allah to the magnificence of Allah to the oneness of Allah and we ask Allah to overlook our shortcomings and sins. And forgive us and enable us to be, to be among those who listen and act upon the best of what they hear.
أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب